Hello YouTube, uh, today we're going to go over some multivariable calculus, just some basic problems like plotting points and finding the domain and range of functions, as well as evaluating functions at certain points. Um, as you can tell, I'm a little sick still, so uh, just bear with me. Okay, so simple plotting points. Uh, just remember that uh, this is your x, your y, and your z. And this graph, I try to make it look as 3D as possible. Um, but just imagine Z is coming up. Um, the x-axis right here is going back into the page. This is going down the page. This is coming up at you, and this is going to the right or left or to the right. Um, so there you have it. I tried my best. So here we go. All right. So plot. So for this point here, you go on the x-axis one. And then up three, one, two, three on the y axis here. And then you go up two after that. So I'm just gonna do this. And then up two. So two would be up here, right? And there's your first point. And to try to get the depth perception, I'm gonna draw a little box here of how it's coming at you. Like so. So that's the first point. Second point, in green, we have 0 on the x-axis, uh, 1 on the y-axis, and then up 2. So it's right there, and that would be a little something like that. Okay. And then we have our third point, so that would be 2 on the x-axis. Oh, big, big note here. See these arrows? That shows the direction in which positive goes. So if I put arrows here, it would be really confusing on which way is positive and which way is negative. So when you make your graphs, guys, uh, like this, for example, say that's the positive, that's direction is positive for the y values, positive up for the z values, and when it comes at you, the positive values are here. So you don't have to label them all the time. I should label the numbers here, but got the point. Okay, so x is 2 and then 0 on the y-axis so we aren't going to move and then we go up 3 so 1, 2, 3 that's really sticking out there so that's here let's say and then da, 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 da. there you go you have that perception okay then we have our I'll just make the points bigger here and then we have our final point is negative 1, negative 2, 1. So negative 1 is here. Negative 2 would be back there. I didn't mark it there. So back there. And then up 1. Ooh, that's an interesting one. How am I going to put that there? Let's say it's here. So we went this way. So I'm going to kind of make like a little cube here, square. So there's the point right there. It's behind the Z axis, sort of, and into the page. So again, those are our final points. So that's simple, basic graphing. It's kind of hard to tell, but you really have to just pay attention um, to what's being graphed there in that depth perception. Okay. So now we're going to um, simply evaluate functions. Um, this is just one example. This is really easy, so we'll like get through this pretty fast. So you just plug in uh, negative 1 for x and 2 for y. So you get 2 times negative 1 minus 3 times 2 squared. Negative 2 minus 3 times 4, which would be negative 2 minus 12, and that would be negative 14 as your answer. Um, there you go. So that would be, so when you write it as a coordinate, you would write negative 1, 2, comma, and then 14 is the z value. Okay, next one. We have, uh, notice here how the x and y are flipped. Um, so now I want you guys not to get too attached to having y and x and x and y in that um, alphabetical order because you might have different letters or different um, uh, placeholders I guess or 
variables other than x and y for graphing. So just for now, tr um, just don't get used to the x and y and z all the time. But uh, we're just going to do it right now since you guys are probably just learning. Um, so now wherever you see a y, you're going to plug in negative 1. And whenever you see an x, you're going to plug in 2. So let's get to it. Okay, so 2 times 2 minus 3 times negative 1 squared. That's 4 minus 3, which is 1. That's simple. Okay, so our point would be negative 1, 2, comma, and then we write 1. Okay, so notice how just by flipping the, or that's not just by, but flipping the um, x and y, you get a totally different number, uh, four, negative 14 and 1. So make sure you pay attention to what your function is um, with respect to and everything. Okay. Now we're just going to try a, this is actually a fourth dimensional function. Um, it's kind of hard to visualize, but mathematically it's easy to solve. Okay, so let's get right to it. So whenever you see an x, you're going to plug in 3. Whenever you see a y, you're going to plug in negative 1. Whenever you see a z, uh, you plug in 1. So 3 squared minus 3 times negative 1 plus 1. All that is square rooted. So 9 uh, plus 4 plus 1. Take the square root, and that's square root of 13. Boom. That simple. And then again, writing the points, I'm just going to do it all in red this time, would be 3, negative 1, 1, radical 13. Okay. Finding the domain and range. Okay, this one's kind of tricky. There's a specific way you have to write this. Well, at least I'm learning how to write this. It's different than what I've learned in the past. Um, but the idea is still the same. How do you find the domain of a function? Uh, well, you got to pay attention to what is, what is uh, inside. Well, let's, let's do this instead. Okay, so if you have ln of x, how do you find the domain of the function? Well, you set it to be greater than 0, right? If you have ln of something, then you set that something to be greater than 0. In this case, this is our something, y minus x squared. So, that said, to find the domain, you just set what's on the inside to be greater than 0. y minus x squared is greater than 0. Now you can make it simple and solve for y, so we can do y is greater than x squared. And that can be your domain. Or in some cases, you may be able to just leave it like that. But the different part um, here is the way you write it. It's very interesting. So the domain is equal to, let's see, now I'm going to write it and then I'll teach you how to say it real quick. So you say the set of all points for x, y with x is a real number and y is a real number such that y is greater than x squared. And that's how you state the domain. But, um, quick question, what do you think the domain would look like? So since you have this parabolic function, if it was like y equals x squared, it would look a little something like this, right? And since we're three-dimensional, I'm trying to make it look like it's three-dimensional here. Oh, big, big error here. Um, that should be a dotted line. Why? Because it's not greater than or equal to. So that is not included in the domain. So then it'd pretty much be everything on the inside um, that would be included in the domain. You could test that value um, by saying like ln of 0, that possible point, does it exist, whatever. Um, so, I'll get rid of that now. So now we got to find the range. Um, my trick for finding the range, quite simple, um, for this function at least. So if this was y and this was x. Um, just what would ln of x look like? So ln of x looks a little something like this. Right? So, 
It never hits the y-axis, so it contains all the values below, and this continues to go upward at a very slow rate, um, but it continues to go get bigger and bigger and bigger. How long? Forever. So if it goes down forever and up forever, um, the way I used to write it, or I learned to write it, was negative infinity to infinity is the range. Um, but now, you write it differently, or I learned to write it differently. So, um, I'm going to say that z is f of xy, just like you would say y equals f of x kind of idea. Um, it's the same concept, but I'm just going to make it simpler. So, if for the z value, so f of xy, um, pretty much all real numbers is how you say negative infinity to positive infinity. So the notation with that would be just this. And that's it for your range. Um, and the reason why uh, this graph proved that it was the range, um, because any natural log, even if it shifted this way, this way, whatever, the vertical um, values are pretty much going to be the same, or the, the range of the function. Um, it doesn't matter if it's shifted left or right, up or down, it's still going to have that up and down um, components. So there's that. Okay, so now we're going to find the domain of this function, just the domain though. So, what would make this function um, be greater than zero? Well, you can't have a zero in the denominator, otherwise the function won't exist. So we're going to look at that component. So we'll have x plus y and set that greater than zero. <laughs> Uh, to make it math easy, you could say uh, y is greater than negative x. But what that really saying is, another way of saying that is, or y can equal x. Um, so if you have the opposite number, if you have 1 is greater than negative 1, pretty much you, it uh, 1 is greater than 1, and then you have the negative in there. It's just the opposite, so they can't have the same numbers, pretty much. Um, so either way works for writing that portion. But in terms of writing the actual domain um, with the new notation, it's called the epsilon delta notation, I believe, um, goes like this. The set of all points with x as a real number and y as a real number, such that um, y cannot equal x. Um, and that's pretty much how you write it. You can put any of these values up here um, for that right there even this one too um, so yeah that's how you find the domain and write it in this specific notation epsilon delta notation okay um, that's pretty much it for today